Good morning everyone, welcome to my channel. So I'm back to show you what I've done in the way of my red piece. It's all finished and it's ready to be added to my project. And I'm also going to talk you through what I plan to do with my tag, which was the extra prompt that Rachel and Sarah gave us. So first of all, really pleased with the way this little one come together. It is still in the theme of the reindeer. And that panel, if you recall, I cut from a stocking, which was a pre-printed factory completed image. So I've just worked it into my piece. I also added some little sparkly um, glue on uh, diamantes to my holly panel here. This panel appeared in the blue one, um, the blue version of it. And I didn't do a lot to it. I sort of left it pretty true to the fabric, but this one I decided to add a heap of seed stitch and then highlight the little holly berries with um, the little uh, glued on gems. So they did have a sticky back, but I end up adding a little bit of art glitter glue as well. That's a stamp down the bottom that I then went over the background with a black marker just to make it pop a little bit more. So I was a bit unsure how that would work, but it, it did work really well. So if you do stamp something and you're not happy that it's dark enough, not enough ink made it really dark, um, by all means, you can try using a pen to highlight it. A little bit of the selvage in the bottom there from the, one of the fabrics, I stitched on some lace just to trim, just highlighted the words there just with a, a little outline and then added some gems to the antlers to give that piece a little pop. I didn't do anything to the lace this time, I just left it simple where the blue one I actually stitched around with some blue thread on that piece. Um, some cross stitch, you know, when you've got checks on a panel you might as well take advantage of the grid system to do some uh, cross stitch. And then just some gentle stitching through that piece just to um, give it a, a, a bit of a subtle stitched little bit more. And then I've got, of course, my buttons ready for my piece to sit over the top. I'll mark the holes, I'll stitch my little buttonholes so that it covers it while it's in my journal. And then um, I'll put probably a number on here. Not sure if it'll be another number one so that I have a blue version and a red version of my bunting. <clears throat> Excuse me. Or I'll do a number two so that I have red, blue, red, blue, red, blue. I just can't decide. I don't think I need to make that decision yet. I'll see how I go by the end of the project and maybe catch up all of the pieces that cover this on the bunting to make it an advent calendar. If you've just found this video of mine and you don't know what the hang I'm talking about, I highly recommend you go back to part one and follow through to this one. And this one should be part five. And that'll get you up to speed of how I've come to this point. Okay, let's move on to the tag. Now, what I decided to do with my tag is make a Santa key. Okay, so I googled Santa key and there's heaps of text out there that will give you some ideas. This is often a pre-printed image of text on uh, a little piece of MDF card and they have a key attached to it and the kids can put it out the night Santa's coming. So I'll just read that out if you can't see it clearly. Dear Santa, we don't have a chimney as you can see so please just use the magic key love from me okay so if this was um, being used for a child for example as a little gift you could put their child's name there and um, use it as a little you know little gift on a parcel I stamped a delivery um, image there now what I mean by that this was the rubber stamp I used to get my reindeer in there was these two postal stamp sort of looks. So I ended up stamping one of those and I also stamped the 25th of December. Now this is an Aussie company and I'm pretty sure this is still available. And I think I'll be using it quite a bit because it gives me a, a bit of a collection of different uh, elements that may pop up from time to time in all my bunting. So you could easily find uh, those at any of the scrapbooking um, shops around Australia because 
you, I don't think you can buy direct. I think they're a wholesaler, but scrapbook companies in Australia would have them and they may even just be on Etsy available. I don't think there's a number. There is a 20 here. So whether it's Christmas reindeer 20, rubber stamps, black door, possibly. Okay, now I just wanna finish off my little tag to show you how I did it. And I did it exactly the same way as I did the Ann Brooks 52 tag challenge a couple of years back. If you wanna see all about that, I'll, I'll link a playlist below, which will take you to the videos of those tags. Now, just be noting that I didn't film the tag making with Anne's project because I wasn't on YouTube at that stage, but I did film a journal to store them. So I'll show you that in a moment. And if it's something that catches your eye, you know, it's some videos that you could watch from um, earlier in the year. And I'm still working on that journal. I'll do the odd stitchery that will go into it, but I'll explain that in a moment. Back to my tag. So I've got a piece of card um, I've reinforced that because it's a little bit lightweight. So there's some extra paper on there as well, just to give it a little bit more body. And I just used my glue stick to attach my fabric once it was, um, um, you know, stitched. Please excuse my little Band-Aid here. I had a run in with a knife peeling some potatoes. So I do apologize if that looks a bit yucky. Um, okay, so the little house, because it's a key, to get Santa in, I thought I'd do a little house on the back. So I just cut out some scraps of my fabrics, used my glue stick to hold them into position, and then did a rough stitch in black over it all, just to tack it down. And then of course did my little chimney. I need to give it an iron because I used my red pen, my fabric pen, just to, to mark it. I also used that same red pen and marked out the tag on the fabric. So it gives you your boundaries, so you know you're just not going to go wrong. So the next thing I'm going to do is cut that tag away. Now, while I do this, I'll just tell you a little bit more about this. This little guy was on a little bit bigger piece of fabric than the house, and I put him in a hoop, which held the fabric stable for me to embroider it. The other thing I did is I used one thread out of some DMC stranded black cotton. So it made the thread nice and fine. I just wrote it as I would in my handwriting, but I made it a little like kooky. So that way, when you're stitching E's, O's and A's, if they don't quite look right, it doesn't matter because you're going for the kooky writing look, like a child has written it, if that makes sense. You could draw some lines um, like you would if you were learning to write at school where they give the kids lines and you form your letters within the two lines. By all means, if you want it to look picture perfect, go for it. But slow stitch isn't that. So all I did was literally write the phrase, anything I didn't like in my red pen, I could just iron it and it disappeared. So I could easily get my positioning right to make sure that my letters of each word didn't fall off my tag. But I did draw the outline of the tag too, so I knew my boundaries. The Dear Santa and the Magic Key is written with two threads because I wanted it to be a little bit more um, predominant. Um, then I just sort of did a little running stitch around the stamp just to tack it on. So I'm just gonna glue now my house on the back. Now in Anne's project, on the back of each tag, I just put the details for um, the prompts. Let's say it was um, bullion stitch. So I would print onto some fabric with my little rubber stamps, the word bullion stitch, and then probably stitch in a couple scrappy bits of fabric and lace that was left from the image on the other side. So that when I turn that tag over, I would know exactly what the prompt was for that week. If you haven't done that project, I'd highly recommend it because it will teach you new stitches. It is a really, really good little exercise to do. Okay, so now my fabric sides have sandwiched that card into position. So now I have a key potentially 
before my house so Santa can get in. Now, what I'll do next, which it may be a bit too wet to do, is I'm getting my crocodile. And I'm going to punch a hole. If you don't have one of these, you can buy smaller, cheaper versions at places like uh, Spotlight, which you would use to put a hole, say, in a belt. They're like a hole punch scenario. <clears throat> and then you can also buy the little crimping thing to um, crimp a uh, eyelet was before this came on the market. That's how we would do it if we wanted to put an extra hole in a belt or we were making something that we wanted the little eyelet to be, you know, featured on something for a string to go through or, you know, you know what I mean. Okay. All right, so that's my little eyelet in. So my tag is now ready. So you're probably wondering, what is she going to do with this tag? What I'm going to do is I'm going to attach some feature ribbons. So I've just got a bull, uh, a bulb pin and knotted together some little satin ribbons so that they're all different lengths and become like a tassel. So that then will go into my... Um, um, uh, sorry, no, I will, I don't have another piece of ribbon handy that might be big enough. Yes, I do. So I do, I'm going to put that through there. Oh, it might not be big enough. I may need to go hunting for more ribbon, but let's pretend that I knot that. And before I knot it, I have a key. Now you can use any key. This one happens to have memory on it and I put a little jump ring, a split ring on it. So that allows that key to sort of dangle better. If you just attach it straight on, it will potentially stick out rigid, where if you put this little jump ring in first, so I'm going to just thread my, so I've got my key attached and I'm, oh, I'll try and knot it, but I don't think I will. I'm going to need that piece to probably be a little bit bigger. So I will find something to knot there that will hold the key to my house. And of course, there's our message to Santa on how to use this. Now, this decorative piece, the reason I've created that, and I'm thinking it's going to most likely attach on the back here just as something to dangle. Does that make sense? I'll show you why. Now, I'm grabbing my journal that I made in the first session with this whole project. And on my spine, I did tab, but you can do a full spine. I used one of these little, uh, little split rings. Now, I get them from the Tim Holtz ideology. They are like a little, little uh, clip at the back that opens up. Let me get one out for you. I use them on all of my journal spines to hold textiles that may be snipped away at to use within the journal. So it's just a lovely spot to gather your um, bits so that whoever gets the journal has something to play with. And it also decorates the spine. So this is the little guy here. That goes through the fabric and then spreads open. Can you see that? spreads open on the other side holding it into position that now gives us this ring on the spine to attach things so my plan is to use one of those get that out of the way this bulb clip will easily go onto there like so so that's my dangle there'll be another bulb clip attached somewhere on this It'll be probably in under the knot once that is done. And then that will attach there. So there we go. That is what I'm going to do with my tag. It's going to be a note to Santa to use the key because I don't have a chimney and I don't want to miss out on any parcels that may be coming my way because I have been very, very good this year. I've tried so hard. Oh, I've tried hard. I know there's still time till Christmas to go off the rails, but... I really tried hard. So I'm hoping there'll be a nice parcel for me under the Christmas tree. 
So that's what I'm going to do with my tag. Now I have one more suggestion. If you don't want to do that, what we will be doing at some point is we will be working on a closure. Now Sarah did something that I haven't tried yet. She made a band of embroidery to wrap around her piece, her book, to keep it closed. I haven't tried that yet and I'd love to. And I love making snippet rolls. So what I'm thinking about, I'm not convinced yet I will actually do it, but I'm thinking I'll create a snippet roll band that will go around with a button. And then on that, I could attach my tag as well. So it would be a feature on the front of your journal, your tag. So just another idea, if you didn't wanna do the side of the journal on the spine, you could do something, you know, with your closure attaching your key. And because it's a bit of a generic message, it sort of would work well, you know, in both of those prominent positions, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I have a third idea. If you are, I need a piece of paper. So let's, let's say we're doing our bunting and you're not putting it in a book. The third idea for people doing that, and you've got all your panels hanging across the top of a doorway or your window. My bunting, where it attaches, it will have some hanging string. Just to finish it on that window. Might as well draw the window while we're at it. Okay, so there's going to be this dingle dangle hanging here. So the key, the tag key idea, could attach at your side. And if it was able to be just hooked up there and you had the kids coming over for Christmas, you could bring it out and say, righto kids, we don't have a chimney. Santa's gonna need a key to get in the front door. Here's the key and attach it to one side of the bunting. That still gives us the other side for maybe something else. Who knows what prompts the girls will give us. So maybe there'll be something pop up that could go you know, on that side. Okay. That's it. That is my uh, suggestion for the tag and how I'm going to use it. That's my red panel completed. So I will finish off my tag and take some photos and they'll be at the very end. But before I go, I just wanted to show you another thing I'm thinking about. As you know, I have created the concertinas inside to take all my pieces. I haven't yet. I'm going to come up a bit with that camera so you can see. Just back it up a little bit. Okay, so I've created my pages. They're all pinned, ready to go, and I plan to stitch around them to hold them so that they're um, ready to have my panels attached to them. Okay, so that's my plan. Then I'm going to unbutton these and take it away and add it to my bunting, which is going to leave quite a plain concertina book. So I've had another idea as something else to do is when I did my Anne Brooks tag project, this is the journal I created for um, the project to store all my tags. Like there's even one on the side. I've um, Rachel did a stitchery on the side of her journal and used that to cover her uh, spine. And because I had four tags that didn't fit evenly on my pages, I'm doing a stitchery based on my four favourite tags. And that was one of them. So I did the piece and then attached the tag and then, you know, attached it again to my piece. So I just want to show you in here, it's the concertina style. I'm yet to do a piece to decorate the inside cover and I have a three tags left. So one of them will go here. But the actual tags I attached with a bold pin and then I used Velcro on the tag and on the page down here so and a pin so that I could flip it up, read what this week was about and it was the week number one and it was fly stitch. And that piece of Velcro helped it from flipping around. But what I want to... So that, to me, is another way you can attach your bunting back into a book is using the Velcro. 
if you didn't want to use pins or um, and, you know tying them in but what I want to show you is this concertina page under all my tags was a fantastic place to store some treasures and I'll just flip them all up and show you what I did so using my plain pages I stitched some um, doilies into position just to decorate the pages they're neutral it covered the calico that's in behind and it's just a beautiful spot to store some treasures now being Christmas these ones here were sort of tre treasures they were just beautiful pieces that I loved but what I'm going to do with my Christmas one being that it's all about memories and Christmas and family I have some doilies that I would never ever ever cut up and they're just in a, a box somewhere safe so what I plan to do is um, so there's doilies under all the pages let me just flip that up see that that's the doily from the front coming through so let me just get this out of the way like I said I'll link the playlist to this project because it's all about storing them not making them but it might give you some journal ideas now I'm just leaning over to grab my book again so what I'm going to do is these pages once I've you know stitched them together I'm going to then go through my my doilies and find some treasures from family members that are no longer with me that have crocheted these pieces and do a little collage of doilies on these pages okay so that one could wrap over and I can just stitch them all on just with a few little stitches and then my pieces will go on the page so technically they're hidden but because this then goes off to become part of my Christmas decorating, I at least have a concertina book here full of treasures. So as I remove a page, oh, I remember that, I remember that. It's like a little extra surprise for me. You could even leave this book out on your coffee table and as family come, they can have a flick through it and go, oh, that's from Great Aunt Aunt and uh, it's now got a little home it's safe it's within your christmas decorating and um, yeah i think it'll be a nice little extra that if we're creating these pages we might as well you know use use all of our bits and pieces that are tucked away and at least at christmas we'll be able to pull the book out it becomes part of our our decorating out goes the page up onto our bunting it's an advent calendar for the kids or yourself and then you've got a journal of beautiful doilies that you've collected and they don't have to be family heirlooms they may be just ones you've picked up an op shop and you've just cannot cut it up because you can see the work in there they're the ones you want to keep they're the ones you want to collect and to be honest if we don't keep some of these things in the future when we're all gone and these journals turn up somewhere whether it be in an antique market or even in an op shop there'll be layers of history here that someone may hopefully appreciate and it sort of reminds me of the journals that um, uh, Rachel found at the antique markets that she thinks may be really really old and you can see where the lady has put in her little snippety uh, treasures so that's my latest ideas so that gives you something to think about with the tag and even decorating your pages a little bit more underneath your pieces okay everyone I'm going to leave the video at that I think I've said everything I wanted oh I know what I didn't mention if you want to know what color that red is which will appear through my whole thing it's a DMC stranded cotton and the red is 816. It's one of my favorites. It's like a, a rich red burgundy, not burgundy, you know, cherry, rich cherry fire engine red. It's really, really pretty. Okay, that's it. No more rambling. I hope that gives you some ideas and gives you a bit of a picture of where I'm thinking I'm going to head with my 
journal for Christmas, which is bunting, which is an advent calendar, and which is expanding into so much unbelievable, so much work. But it's all good. We have time. And I'm really pleased that I'm nutting this out now because if we got to December and I still didn't have a plan, it wouldn't happen because December is so busy. Not even just for me because I have Christmas shops, but for you guys as well. We're starting to plan our Christmas. We're starting to plan holidays and maybe going away. So I really recommend that you get this sorted now. Get it started. We know our measurements. We've been through the process already at the beginning of the year. So we sort of know where we want to head with it. Let's nut this out this month. Get our bases done. So then we can just cruise on into Christmas enjoy the holidays and all we're doing is just adding to our stitchery um, the pieces that we create as we slide into December. Okay everyone I'll leave you in peace now have a lovely day um, I'm recording this it's Wednesday and the girls will have their videos out tonight so I can't wait um, I'll probably post this video tonight as well I'll just see how my day goes to see if I can get it edited and up and done so you may even see it tonight okay everyone talk to you all soon bye for now